Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have with us Dr. Amar Setti, who is the co-founder of Patient Premier. Dr. Setti, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Hey, so I see in your bio that you are a physician entrepreneur, so I want to get a, a tiny quick thumbnail sketch of your background and then what led you to found Patient Premier, but um, I, I want to make a quick observation. Isn't it interesting that physician entrepreneur pretty much means 30 minutes of sleep per day? Because as a, <laughs> when you watch all the TV shows about physicians, you don't get much sleep anyway, and then entrepreneur, wow, um, you see those uh, uh, funny memes online of, oh, I remember when you had a 40 hour week when I had a 40 hour week job that was a part time job so you've got quite a lot on your plate so give us a little bit of your background and I want to learn about patient premier yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, we'll definitely uh, talk about work-life balance, and uh, that that is something that you naturally find over time. Even working uh, a full-time job and building a company, you can find that balance, and that, that's part of what I think is so rewarding about entrepreneurship is finding challenges and that excitement of finding solutions to challenges is uh, is what really drives people. So my own personal story, I think, uh, started uh, in this context when I finished uh, residency at Johns Hopkins, and I went into practice. And uh, in the course of my work uh, as an anesthesiologist and doing a lot of work in uh, pain medicine as well. I uh, also branched out into advocacy. I was president of the Maryland Society of Anesthesia. I did a lot of regulatory work. I was on the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program Advisory Board. So I saw multiple different levels of where uh, issues lie, where there are opportunities and challenges. And in that context, I realized that so many people are falling through the cracks of a system that stigmatizes pain, stigmatizes pain management, uh, and yet at the same time, uh, pain is ubiquitous. About one in five U.S. adults has pain. Um, that's over 50 million people. Uh, about 17% of Americans got at least one opioid prescription uh, in, in 2017, for example. Uh, it affects uh, so much of our daily lives, and yet it's so highly stigmatized to treat and talk about pain. And I realized there has to be a kind of a better way, and that kind of sets up where my partner and I in 2017 uh, decided to develop and uh, build the pain scored application and create the company Patient Premier. Well, it's so interesting how you uh, led up to that because uh, I'm sure you watch Shark Tank and so many times that's a similar story. You know, I needed this, couldn't find it, and so I went exactly. out and created the solution. And so you and your training started noticing and, and you were not tunnel vision and only did my thing and checked the box. You were noticing and noticing pain and opioid and what the industry is currently doing and not doing and you saw an opportunity. So um, what, what was that? And, and how then is Patient Premier looking to solve that and close that gap? Mm -hmm. So much of what we do, and this, this is part of pain, but it's part of everything we do in healthcare. So much of what we do is poorly communicated in office visits. When you see your doctor and you're talking about what hurts, what doesn't hurt, you're talking about your blood pressure or any other symptom or side effect you're having, people tend to recall only what happened in the past 48 hours, maybe uh, maybe a week at most, have a terrible time remembering everything that happened in the three months building up to that appointment. How active were they? What things happened? What affected uh, you know, their ability to get up and get around and do what they need to to have a quality of life? Did the medicines help them or did they not help them? Did they have side effects of those medications? When we see our doctor, we only have a few minutes. How do you communicate all that information in a short period of time? It becomes extremely difficult. And uh, physicians are under a lot of stress. They can't 
uh, process everything they need to in a short visit, and yet uh, uh, because of a lot of reasons, office visits are relatively short. So that means it's important to find ways to communicate with between patients and physicians in between office visits and to do it in an efficient way that communicates a lot of information in a short amount of time so that you can make treatment decisions. And that's where my partner and I looked and said, if we have a system to take what's called the pain diary, that's where patients will jot down and list their symptoms, their side effects uh, on a daily basis or a frequent basis uh, in between office visits when it comes to pain. You can look at it and you can judge whether you need to make treatment changes, whether you need to alter a course of therapy or even consider what's called an expensive interventional pain procedure. The pain diary, as it was done up until very recently, until what we what we created with Pain Scored, is a bunch of handwritten notes, often illegible, done inconsistently, and it was hard to get any meaning out of it. So we said, let's do this in a way that's easy to do under 60 seconds each session, gives you a lot of information, and allows people to see their own data in order to help the physician make better decisions. Mm -hmm. And so that is where we came up with the basic idea of Pain Scored, our first application under uh, the company Patient Premier. Uh, So I I love how how you mentioned that uh, people's kind of, I don't know, recollection or perception mm-hmm. of pain is really limited, even though if you, you know, took them back and said, well, uh, what about back on this day, a week and a half ago? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I think that we tend to gravitate toward, you know, either the really, really good or the really, really bad, but only in that recent time frame. So you noticed that and how can you solve it? Um, it's not as easy as just going, well, hey, jot down every day. It's not going to work. They're not going to do mm-hmm. it. And then, yes, it's illegible. So if you can have this digital tool and opportunity, it goes way past when I was remembering uh, when you are mentioning that, taking my kids in years past, you know, oh, they've got this whatever, mm-hmm. um, broken this or that. And the nurse would p- point to, you know, like this chart with a smiley face, a frowny face, these whole gradients. And like, well, where's your pain? This, 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 or this. Well, now you've got a tool that helps people track and and really um, help themselves out as well as the physician. So my first thought when you mentioned that is how do you, even though the tool could be whiz-bang and wonderful, how do you make sure it gets used so that the data can be used? Right, and that's always the tough thing is that you're trying to create something new uh, that people aren't used to and that we're asking them to do frequently. The only way for that to work is for both patients and physicians to see a benefit. So we come up with the premise of uh, this is a good tool, this will help you make better decisions, this will help you communicate with your physician. We tell the physician that in order for this to work right, especially on patients uh, who are taking chronic pain medicine, you want to make sure that this is part of their treatment plan because you need this information to make better decisions. And as long as the patient and physician have that discussion, as long as someone realizes it's part of their treatment plan, it'll help them get better, and it'll help them understand better what's going on, that's going to help increase uh, their use. And that's what we found is that connection, that feeling that in between office visits, even though you can't call and you leave messages, all this other stuff, Even between office visits, this data, this information that you've got is being collected. It is going to be seen and it will be acted upon. And that gives you some comfort. And I think over time we found that the more patients use it, the more comfortable they are feeling like they've still got the connection with that physician. Um, Does that make sense? It totally does. And it makes me think, too, that the first time that the patient goes in to see their physician after using it for a period of time, and then the physician goes, wow, I can see that on this date and this, and you know, the, and then you can talk about the results. That confirms to the patient, wow, it wasn't that hard to do, and boy, we really 
made some headway compared to previous appointments where you know you didn't have that data to go by. So I think that maybe that little extra confirmation motivates them to continue doing it because they see some some results right away in their uh, conversation with their doctor, right? Exactly. And we also tie it with uh, some activity monitoring so that we can see just how much the patient's moving around and doing things. Yeah. And uh, we can, uh, uh, and what we do is we Im- uh, include some assessments of mental health because pain in and of itself is not just physical injury. It's a yeah. combination of a lot of things. Um, it uh, is important to know where people's mental health is because that affects how much pain they have. Uh, it's important to know how active they are because sure. if they're having severe pain, uh, but it's fairly controlled and they're very active, then they don't need to up their pain medicine. They can stay where they are. It's about quality of life. It's about um, making sure that you're able to participate in the things you need to do to stay happy and functional, to have a job, uh, to see your family, all the things that we value in different ways to say that we're happy. And traditional measures, especially in the past where people pushed the pain score and said, you got to be at a certain number, or I got to give you more pain medicine, I got to give you more opioids. All of that led to problems. We need better ways of assessing pain, and that's the heart of what pain score attempts to do, is assess that idea, something that's so subjective, that's so different from person to person, and say, what is it that makes you achieve what you need to do to be happy in life? And that's a, that's a unique and a new idea, something that's somewhat revolutionary in a lot of ways, even though it's hard to communicate, is that how do we as physicians make people have a better quality of life, not yeah. just have them have better numbers on a piece of paper, yeah. not just have them, you know, have, uh, you know, show that they're taking their medicines, but that they're happier, they're healthier, they're more active. Those are the things we want to build towards, I think, not just as an application and a company, but as a society. Um, it's a big thing. If we make it, people it really happier, is. we yeah. will solve so many problems. Because the physician throws a party and checks the box when meds mm-hmm. taken, numbers achieved. But what if you're in some fog or you know a lessened uh, a state of uh, well-being? Well, then what does that do for the patient? So it, there is that balance of let's both work together. It's I was doing a presentation last night and I made the example of how in the old days you would do a financial planner would go, hey, let's buy this stock, sell this stock, and there would be commissions, and then it moved to the um, assets under management model where they basically said, look, I can move you money 10 times a day. It doesn't cost you a dime. I make mm-hmm. money when your portfolio grows. So we're in this together. So in your right. example, the patient and the physician are in it together to help the well-being. And one of the tools now is this that helps us assess, not diagnose because that's the physician's job, but assess mm-hmm. how we, you know, kind of gives a little peek under the hood a little bit clearer, I would suspect. And I wonder if you've heard some really great great reviews from physicians saying, before I was kind of flying blind, and now with this tool, I can take a quick five-minute glance at their, their data when they come in the, uh, the room, and we can really dive in and, and make some great headway based on what they've been tracking. Yeah, exactly. Um, what, uh, what we've um, heard from a couple of users, uh, one one said uh, pain score it helped our care team take care of more patients with less resources. We can see the benefit and harm of therapy, and we feel like this is the future of uh, of, um, of medicine. And then uh, in this particular case, reimbursement or payments for uh, for this, these kind of remote services, especially now in a time of physical isolation, have been so critical. And uh, our solutions actually help some people maintain uh, income um, despite uh, the inability to bring patients into the office. And so the combination of telemedicine and what we do, which is remote care, it's been phenomenal uh, for some people. So, yeah, that's a really good point, which is you're serving two people, patients mm-hmm. and 
physicians, right? Exactly. So talk a little bit about that balance because it's not like you sell a widget to the end user and they say, thank you, this is wonderful. You, you're you balancing the features and benefits mm-hmm. with two target audiences. That's one of the very unique things about medicine in this country is any solution developed uh, for patients has a dual customer, in, in a lot of ways, three customers. You have the patient who's the end user but doesn't pay for the service. You have the physician who is a uh, prescriber of the service who uses the service but doesn't actually pay for it. And then you have the insurer that does pay for it. Uh, And you've got to strike a balance between all three customers. Um, The patient has to get benefit out of it uh, and feel like it's helping them. The physician also has to get benefit from it. The physician has to not just get benefit from it, but it has to not suck up their resources in the process. So anything has to fit into their workflow. It has to be easy to use and integrate and has to provide some value. Uh, And then the insurer, uh, they want to feel like they're paying for something that, uh, that works. So you've got these three customers and it's, yeah, tough to balance all three. But when you do, now you've got quite the solution because you've hold, you've heard the old cliche when it's a win-win and now in this case, so another win, a win-win-win, boy, mm-hmm. everybody is benefiting and then you are sitting back from the outside going, okay, let me listen to my three uh, uh, pillars now. How can we improve? What can we do? What are some things that we can polish or, or um, you know, add to? Or is this feature something that you're not using? So I think that that just helps for you guys to create more of the momentum. Um, and and I, just, I just love when you see it's, it's more than just end user only. There are many facets of, of receiving and recognizing the value. Mm-hmm. So what would you say the mission of your company is? It's all based on pain, but there now are some nuances we've touched on, which is patient-focused, physician-focused. What would you say the mission of your company is, and then what is your, you know, kind of a a strategy to move the company toward achieving that? Yeah, uh, so uh, I love that. Uh, I'll just read you my mission statement. It's a bit of a word salad, but we'll unpack it. (laughs) Creating lifestyle-compatible mobile applications and services that improve care, coordination, and education while also enhancing provider efficiency. So underlying that are two types of empowerment, one for the patient and the second for the provider. You made an analogy earlier to financial services, and I'm going to extend that a little bit right here when it comes to patients. Um, As consumers in financial services, it was a black box for, for many years until the early 2000s when the Internet democratized uh, access to information. It also made it easier for consumers to do financial transactions. You didn't have to you know, call in your broker uh, and pay higher fees. You didn't have to call up some dial-up service like it was when I uh, started trading uh, and enter your um, – your stock trades via those uh, alphanumeric keypads. Mm-hmm. Uh, and <laughs> it, uh, you know, we've come a long way since then, and so it's that combination of the right technology platform and the right ability to access information. So by empowering patients with technology, it doesn't just mean you throw something in their lap. You have to give them resources around it to educate them, to make it easy to use, uh, and even in some cases to make it fun. Uh, on the provider side, we've got to fit into everything they're doing. As we mentioned earlier, it's got to be easy for them, easy for their staff, easy for the uh, provider, uh, and then it's got to provide that value. So that's kind of that dual mission is to create services that improve uh, the ability for patients to do more of their care and understand more of what's going on while also improving a phys- physician's ability to provide care. I, I love it. It's got that uh, everything all in one. It reminds me of, of an old analogy I've heard from the speaker world. Um, everyone's favorite radio station is WIIFM which stands for what's in it for me. And the writer <laughs> wants to hear from you what's in it for me. 
you know, and, and, and you're, you need to be able to say, well, we're able to boom. And then the same with the patient. So you said a couple things. I want to ask this question. When you say we make it easy for the provider and for the, the uh, patient, we make it fun. What is it about your app, your, your software, your service that makes it easy for the provider? And then how is it fun for the patient to be able to keep this? Is there a gamification or a tracking that they can, they can uh, use in there that kind of engages them? Yeah, absolutely. So that's some of the feedback we've gotten from our early experience, and it's being built into the new application that we've got coming out uh, in about a month and a half. Uh, That is going to be full of uh, education as well as some uh, levels of gamification where you achieve points for achieving certain things. You have kind of a daily checklist so you can track and monitor what you're supposed to be doing, what you've done, uh, and uh, and get uh, some level of reward for that. Uh, in the process. Now, uh, in some ways, this is like that old game, whose line is it anyway? You collect points and the points don't mean a don't thing. Matter, but right. Getting the points <laughs> itself matters. Yep, yep. Uh, that will be transitioned into something else. Uh, what, what we've learned, what we've learned collectively as, a, uh, as an industry and as a country in a lot of ways is that um, the reward that works for you isn't the one that works for someone else. And you have to find ways to uh, incentivize people uh, that uh, work across the board, and that means that you've got to create the right platform that allows you to do that. This is going to be a trial and error approach as we as we get into that, as we learn what works for some people and not others, uh, and then we try to uh, uh, adjust and, and fine tune for each individual. So that was a, a bit of a long winded explanation to saying that we're working on it, and uh, we think. Uh, we're going to address uh, uh, those needs so that uh, patients not only get intrinsic benefit out of doing it, but also a little bit of uh, extrinsic benefit as well. Yeah, because just saying less than 60 seconds, that's wonderful because it's not laborious. But then when you add a little bit of a flavor of tracking gamification, just a little bit of a fun flair, then that 60 seconds is even less uh, of, mm-hmm. you know, of a barrier. So I, I think that that means a lot that you say you listen and you um acted upon your feedback and the next iteration coming out very, very soon is going to um, head that direction. So I absolutely just love what you're doing, Dr. Seti. This is just really uh, groundbreaking in a sense that it's so far past just do this and fill this format. It is it is technology, but it's for the end user's benefit, both from the patient and the provider. So what's the best way that someone would, would be able to reach out, learn more about uh, your company more and more about your program? Yeah, so our uh, product site, uh, the most important place for anyone to go to would be uh, painscore.com, www.painscored.com. Uh, you got to remember the D at the end, and that'll take you directly to our website where we've got information about the application. We've also got general educational resources under the resources tab, uh, videos, uh, lots of information in general about pain, about pain treatment, um, and then some information for physicians. Uh, any patient that wants to use the service uh, can now download and use the app. But it's encouraged that you get your physician to uh, also uh, uh, participate in the service uh, to get in touch with us to sign up so that they can follow your data and that they can learn about ways that uh, uh, they can even collect some uh, reimbursement for the work that they're doing in between office visits. It might make it easier for you as a patient to stay home and not come in uh, and communicate uh, electronically. And that's, uh, that's kind of especially now, uh, that's something that we want to make clear that uh, this gives a patients an additional tool, uh, a resource. Excellent. Well, Dr. Seti, thank you so much for coming on the program today. It was wonderful talking with you. It was great talking to you, too, and uh, I really uh, appreciate the time and uh, your interest. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad we were able to connect. You're so welcome. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.